Solverse, Human Terms of Phrase, by Eddie Eddie. The lecturer looked at the class, mostly diplomats-to-be, a few officers' children, and noble sons and daughters. There were a few cameras and recording devices. This sort of lecture was useful for anyone who was working with humans. The lecturer, a Scythian of some repute, but not significant enough to be notable to the Federation. The lecturer started with a picture of a human midway through what looked like a suicidal jump off a cliff. The phrase, why not, was emblazoned above it. Humans are very unique in their language, where a two-word phrase can mean several different things. Further to that, it's quite easy to exchange one word in the phrase to several others and retain the same intent. Yet change one word and suddenly the entire phrase can be used to mean another set of things. The slide behind them changed, and this time it showed a set of phrases. This is the first phrase we'll be going over, generally referred to as the blanket set. These can be anything from copulate it to detonate it. Below the title are some examples. This can mean a few things. Generally, if aimed at an object, this can mean, I do not care, I will ignore it, or I'm about to disregard all recommendations and attempt something. The latter usually precede an event that the Federation has termed a human incident. The lecture class collectively winced or grinned. They'd all heard the term before. The term had been coined by another lecturer after a human had said the phrase, well, let's try it, before an entire physics lab was erased from space-time, only to return three weeks later. It'd been submitted as part of the incident report. Incident type, human. Generally, the human incident in question involves direct disregard for a significant impediment or extreme risk. However, this phrase should not be confused with a very similar phrase, where the it is exchanged for you. Again the slide changed, and this time the phrase at the top was different. These are considered the blank you phrases. These are generally insults or denials of your statements. Depending on the circumstances, this precedes everything from the human attempting to injure you, if you have aggravated them enough, or the human storming off. In some circumstances, the human is denying your denial of his actions, and will proceed to take said course of action irregardless of your protests. These later uses once again result in human incidents. It is important to note, however, this phrase can also be used in jest or in congeniality with friends. The lecture waved at the screen. The lecture screen changed again, this time what was clearly a confrontation between a trichal and a human, both intoxicated on some kind of chemical. The human was likely alcohol. The trichal could have been any number of substances. Words were exchanged, and eventually the human yelled at the trichal. Fuck you, buddy, and whatever crab spawned you. Before storming out the door. As you can see, the phrase was used in an aggressive, threatening manner. But the human still left. When a human uses one of the blank you phrases, you will have to use a series of context clues, as well as your knowledge of that specific human, to gauge what its next course of action will be. The slide changed again. This time it was a human, midway through charging a rather angry-looking monstrosity from their home world. The phrase, Want a bet? was written under it. One of the more famed human phrases, Want a bet? is used to indicate that you, or another, has stated that the human cannot or is incapable of doing something, but the human believes it is possible, and has taken your disbelief as an insult. This generally results in the human attempting the very thing that you stated they were not capable of. This always precedes a human incident. An example is as follows, from the incident report on Vefit 2. The lecturer picked up a data pad and started reading. Situation report, planet Vefit 2. There has been a disruption in interstellar communication due to an incident involving a human ship's officer, several Korsk and a Trikal officer. According to witness testimonies, the human ship's officer was drinking, claiming that the local communication net was so worthless, he could take it apart with nothing more than a pair of pliers and wire clippers. An altercation started between the human and the Korsk. Eventually, the altercation was broken up by the Trikal, who was an officer within the local communication network. After hearing something about this, he told the human that it was impossible. The human's response was, Want to bet? Give me ten minutes in any of the communication rooms, some pliers, and wire clippers, and it'll all go to pot. The officer, being somewhat inebriated at the time, allowed this, but did not tell the human that the communication room was disabled at the time. Despite this, the human had made some modification to the global communications net. That means that any visual communication displays the sender without any clothes or garments whatsoever. The lecturer stopped and looked at the class. 
If a human ever asks you if you like a bet, the safest response is to decline. The class looked at each other, certain that while it was the safest, it might not be the most amusing. Human turns of phrase are also used to create shorthand phrases or descriptions of processes. For instance, it is well known that humans will choose to give close associates shorthand names that are either descriptive or a play off the person's name or attributes. I will not be going over these to keep things short, as every species and creature has at least one. The lecturer paused and shuffled her notes. Now, there are several dozen other phrases that humans use. I will be covering one more, and the incident that introduced it to the Federation. Your short-term coursework is to produce a docket containing no less than five human phrases and their common meanings and uses. Extra credit is available for attaching incident reports involving the phrases. The lecturer moved on to a new slide reading, Die now or later. This phrase has several variations and can even take the form of several others, but it is oft delivered in such a tone to make its intent clear. It has two forms. The first is simply a human taking a highly risky decision for little more than glory or joy. The second, however, is more important. I will now play the incident report to indicate why. The lecturer pressed a button on the controls and let the recording play. From the speakers, a shaky voice came, clearly rattled and unsure of what to say. This is the captain of the transport, Lucky Stars, reporting the d The voice was cut off by someone yelling in the background. He isn't dead, he's MIA. The voice was clearly human, and with heavy emotion. The captain made a rattling noise that indicated him as a tricol. Reporting that our engineer Alexander Clare is MIA after repairing our external shielding systems. The following recording is the last known interaction between engineer Clare and the crew. There was a click followed by the sound of static hiss that was common from security recordings. So... What you're saying is we're flying at half sea in a dust cloud, and our shielding is busted. A gruff human voice said. The captain responded. That is the gist of it. A second human voice cut in, the one that interrupted the captain from earlier. Can't we call a rescue ship? Too far out. We'd be scrapped by the time they arrived. A fourth voice responded. Sorry I got us into this mess. I did say we needed a new nav comp. Clearly this voice was the navigator. I guess someone has to go out and fix it. There was a chorus of affirmative noises. Well, guess I should suit up. The human said. The affirmative noises turned to ones of shock and horror. You'd not last ten minutes. The navigator protested. It's suicide. The captain almost shouted. Die now or later. Someone has to do it and I'm the engineer. The gruff human said, and the sound of heavy tools being shifted could be heard. Are you sure, Alex? The other human asked, his voice quiet. Yeah. Any intelligent creature could hear the waver in the engineer's voice. He wasn't sure. Just do me a favor and look after Moxie, and no matter how much she begs, don't give her dairy. The vet said it gives her the runs. There was a dry, humorless laugh from both humans. I will. Good luck. See you in ten. Shouldn't take long. The sound of an airlock opening, and then the static hiss ended indicating the security recording had finished. The captain's voice returned. It has now been 40 of the human minutes. 25 minutes ago, our shields came back online. It... It has been decided by myself and the three remaining heads of the department that we shall wait five more human minutes before resuming course. The recording ended, and the class looked at one another. There had been stories of humans being suicidal to save close friends and their pets. Especially their pets. There had even been a narrow miss with an all-out war over one specific cat. But this? This was above and beyond. No sane creature would commit such a suicidal act just so there might be a chance of his companions getting out of such a situation. The lecturer resumed talking. Humans are capable of conveying a lot of information and intent in very few words. Learning what these words mean and how they are used is very important in dealing with humans in diplomatic and social settings. Class dismissed.